Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know step by step on how to make a WordPress website using Divi. And Divi is the most popular theme on WordPress for really good reason. First of all, not only is it a very great and robust theme, but it also includes a builder that makes it extremely easy to make your WordPress website in a matter of hours with absolutely no knowledge of coding at all. So by the end of this video, you will have a full blown WordPress website ready to go. And I promise it's extremely easy to do. So you can follow along in this video click on exactly what I click on. I'll even give you some sample images. And by the end of the video, you'll have a website that looks something like this right here. And, and so as you can see right here, the editor is very easy to use. You can drag and drop things wherever you want. You can edit images, you can edit text, you can add different forms, have subscribers sign up. You have so many different options with WordPress and Divi makes it extremely easy to build your website, to make blog posts, to make pages, to make anything that you want, even an online store using WordPress. So without hyping up WordPress anymore, I think you get the idea. Divi is a great theme. It's very popular. So let's get into it in this video and start off with how you get your WordPress website set up. So the first thing we want to do is actually open up any browser of your choice and go to centralmedia.com forward slash HostGator or click on the link down below. HostGator is what we recommend. And if you go through our affiliate link, you will get the best rate. So it's as low as $2.95 per month, which is generally why we recommend HostGator to beginners. Uh, it tends to be a lot cheaper. And when you're starting out, uh, saving money is definitely very important. If you want to uh, spend a little bit more money, you could also go with SiteGround as well. It's another great one that we recommend. But HostGator here, you'll see, has quite a few different offerings, including some different domains you can get, uh, different plans for, you know, if you want to get 36 months at a time, 24 months, whatever you want to do. They have lots of options and lots of, you know, pretty fair pricing from our opinion. So we are going to choose uh, between these three plans. So you have the Hatchling plan, the Baby plan, and the Business plan. And the prices at the bottom that say starting at, that's the price you're going to get when you sign up for 36 months at a time. So you could do a slightly shorter amount of time if you want to spend slightly more money per month, but save money overall. Now we can actually choose our domain. So I'm choosing the baby plan here. Domains, you'll just type in whatever you want. And if it shows up green, that means you're good. You can use this domain. Now, down here is what I was talking about with different plan options. Uh, so 36 months is going to give you the lowest rate. And if you're starting out, maybe that makes sense for you if you can afford it. Uh, but for this video, I'm just going to go with 12 months because that's kind of the breaking point where if you look at 12 months, it's $71. Uh, but if you actually look at six months, weirdly enough, you're paying more money when you get six months. So you see there, it's actually about 30 cents more to go with six months versus 12 months. So uh, you might as well save yourself 30 cents and get an extra six months free there. Uh, then we can create a username, we can create a pin, uh, enter in the billing information down below. Uh, and once we have that all set up, we'll click on the next button on the bottom to confirm the purchase and we will get started with this website. Okay, so down here, you'll see that the overall pricing listed. Um, before we actually click confirm, one other thing I want to point out is the additional services. They have quite a few here, and I recommend reading through them and choosing which ones you can afford and which ones you want to add on. If you want none of these, of course, the price is going to be as advertised above. Otherwise, you could have things like an Outlook account. Uh, so you'd have that, that email there. You could back up your website using CodeGuard. Uh, you could have things like uh, the... SSL on the top. This already does come with an SSL certificate, so you don't necessarily need that, um, but it's just going to be a more advanced one. And so read through these and check out which ones make sense for your needs and select them. And then we can actually go down and click on confirm purchase uh, and we will be ready to go with this website. So the total amount due right here is $87.25. So that, that is for the entire year uh, of having this website. So that includes a, for, a full year uh, of a free domain. And then after that, we will have to start paying for the domain next year. Um, but we are going to agree to the terms of service. Check out now. And it takes a few minutes now for HostGator to set up our account. But once it sets it up, it should bring us on to our dashboard for HostGator. All right, and so now it's finally done. And you'll see here that our dashboard, uh, it has a lot of stuff. For the, for the most part, we really won't be using the HostGator dashboard too much. This is really where you would want to go to uh, you know, kind of manage your subscriptions, manage your domains, manage your different websites. Uh, this is not where you'll be building your website, but you do have to get this first of all to set up your website. Uh, so we will be clicking on that big orange button on the top that says create a website. Um, but you know, of course, on the left side, you have your marketplace. If you want to add some other apps through HostGator, we can see domains. We can also see hosting on the left side. But if we just go to create the website, it'll kind of walk you through the steps here. And we want to click on get started and get started redirects us to this website right here. And really all you have to worry about is click install now and then go down. And we want to make sure that when we're setting this up, we set it up with the right website name. 
Don't worry if you don't know what your website is name your website name is yet. Type in whatever you want here and I'll show you where to change that later on in the video. But we're just going to type in Santrell Tutorials and this is going to be WordPress Tutorials by Santrell. That's going to be our site description. Sometimes they call it the tagline depending on where you're looking. And then create your username, create your password and go down below and they'll give you some plugins that uh, you might want to add or some other things that you have options for. Uh, so you could like limit the number of login attempts. You could go with a classic editor and you know some other things like that if you're really interested in those. Now I don't really recommend changing anything down here. Don't You don't need to worry about selecting a theme uh, because in this video I'll be showing you how to get the Divi theme of course um, and it's just easier if you do that through the WordPress dashboard. So on the bottom when we're done here just click on in install and this one takes probably three to four minutes is what it says um, so honestly for me it's like one or two minutes so there we go once that's done we want to go up to the top and type in our domain so for this case it's santraltutorials.com that's the domain I bought forward slash WP dash admin so WP for WordPress of course and it will bring you to this page right here where you can sign in using your username and password that you created earlier on just about 30 seconds ago. And once we sign in, it shows you the WordPress dashboard here. And this is where all the magic really happens. It, of course, it's really cluttered when you first get started. You'll see we have some things that need to be updated. And when you start off with HostGator, they, they, they try to give you a nice head start and give you like Jetpack and Google Site Kit and all these other things that, in my opinion, kind of just clutter it up. So we're going to start decluttering. So looking at this right here, like I said, just select all the ones that you don't want. And then on the top, we can go to bulk actions. Uh, so I think I'll get rid of these four right here. And we are going to deactivate these first. And then once we deactivate them, select them all again, and we are going to move them to trash. Uh, moving them to trash or just deleting them is going to be, so there we go, delete, click apply. And we will say, yep, we are definitely going to do that. So that'll get rid of them, clean up this a little bit. Uh, and then on top of that, there's a couple other things we want to get rid of. And I promise we'll get into this in a second and really start building this website. But first of all, let's make sure we, you know, clean up all our bases there. So update any plugins that are not updated. Uh, and then finally, let's get back to the dashboard. You see it's much cleaner now. We don't have stuff all over the place. And going down the left side, we have posts, we've got media, we've got pages, we have comments. Uh, and just down the left side is really where you get to the majority of what you're trying to do with WordPress. So going through these, of course, they give you some pages that you don't need. So if you select those, move them to trash. And if you click on trash, you can actually just empty your trash. And this gets rid of the pages that we don't want. So we don't really want these weird blank pages. We don't, likewise, we don't want comments that are meaningless comments. So select the comment, click move to trash click apply. That way we get rid of that. Um, and then we can actually get down to appearance. And this is going to be the general theme of what our website is. So what the font is, uh, what the color scheme is. And if we just go and visit our website on the top, you'll see that a website looks pretty bad right now. Honestly, quite pitiful. It looks really boring. There's nothing going on. And we're going to build this up from scratch from what it is right now and make it really look like a good website. All right, so we are on the WordPress dashboard here. We have our domain, we have our hosting, we have WordPress, everything's pretty much ready to go. And we're about to start making our website using Divi. And there's a couple things I wanna do first of all. Now, the very first one is I wanna make sure that I don't lose you at any point in this video. So there's a couple things we could do. First of all, we should open a new tab and go to santralmedia.com slash Divi dash checklist. And this does a couple things. So first of all, I have a checklist of everything I'm going to cover in this video, as, as well as timestamps too. So if you get lost in the video, you can go over here and say like, well, what the heck did he do? What link was that? And I have them right here. So you can go and say, for HostGator, we can get that right there. If you want to get Divi, if you want to get the images to follow along and do exactly what I'm doing, I have the images right here. And this is also going to be updated as time changes. So depending on when you're watching this video, if I uploaded it maybe a month or two ago, just in case anything changed, I will be updating this checklist right here. So this will be very up to date. I really recommend you guys open this in a new tab, or maybe if you want to watch this full tutorial and then make your own website later, come and revisit this and you can see the checklist of everything that you want to be doing. Now that we have all of that, I think we're ready to actually get this website going and we want to go and actually get Divi first of all. So Divi, if you go to centralmedia.com slash Divi and hit enter, it'll bring you to this page right here. Another way you could do that is going over to the checklist that I mentioned before. And if you just go down, you could click on get Divi right there or anywhere else that says get Divi. So right there. And so that'll bring you to this page right here. And Elegant Themes is actually the owner of all these products. Divi is what we care about. But if you go up to all products, you'll see that they have the Divi all in one theme. That is what we're getting. 
They also have the they have extra. They've got the Divi Builder plugin. So if you don't want to use Divi Theme, but you still want the Divi Builder, you can do that right here. We have got Bloom and we have Monarch. Now we're going to be doing this one right here, but of course the pricing includes all of those. So you can really decide later on if you want to use uh, some some of these other things like uh, the Bloom email opt-in plugin. That's a really powerful tool that you can use, uh, and it's going to come with this pricing. So if we go to pricing, uh, you have the $89 per year or $249 for a lifetime access. So it just depends. If you're going to have your website for more than like three or four years, it would probably be worth it to just get lifetime access. Uh, but, you know, if if you're kind of tighter on cash now, maybe you could just do yearly access. It doesn't really matter which you choose. Uh, but, of course, you will be getting really the same thing with both of them. And, of course, uh, it does have a risk-free guarantee. So 30-day money-back guarantee, uh, they'll give you a refund. So if you get Divi and you realize after 29 days that for some reason it's just not working for you, then you can just get your money back with really no questions asked. So what we're going to do, at least in this video, I'm just going to go with the yearly one. Uh, I actually already have a license, so I'm just going to click on this and show you guys what to do, and then I'll put my own license in. But you're going to click sign up today, and when you do that, you'll just type in your, your name, your email address, create an account with them, give them your credit card information, uh, you could agree to their terms of service that's necessary and if you want to get updates by email you can go ahead and do that I usually opt out of that and then once you choose to pay for this uh, you'll say complete registration and it'll pop up and give you a couple different options all right so once you paid for everything it'll take you to this page right here and you can see that we have the Divi builder plugin we got Divi theme uh, we have extra bloom and monarch and you can use all of these just download them and then I'll show you what to do with them in a second but we are going to click download Divi theme uh, and so once it downloads it'll show up down here somewhere and like I said I already did install this unfortunately so I'm going to be showing you guys this in like two different phases so just click download once you paid for it it'll show up down here uh, and you can click on the three dots or a little up arrow depending on the browser you're using and say show in folder and it'll show you where it's saved uh, and so you can see like right here for me it's saved in my downloads um, so we have divi.zip and that's what we really want to keep an eye on. So you want to know where that's saved because we will be uploading that. Uh, so now let's go back to uh, the WordPress dashboard. And in our dashboard, we want to go to Appearance. And like I said, I already have Divi. I already have a license here. So we're going to go up to Add New. And from Add New, you're going to upload a theme. So of course, they have a lot of other themes you could choose from. But for this video, I really recommend you go with the Divi theme. Uh, and just everything works out very smoothly if you're working with Divi Builder and Divi Theme. Very powerful and extremely popular. Now, we are going to upload Divi Theme uh, and so we can choose the file. So choose file. It'll open it up. And from there, you'll go to, for me, it was in downloads. So if we go to downloads, uh, you should see right here divi.zip. And so we're going to open this. Now, I already have this, but you're going to say install now. And once you stay and say install now, it'll pop up right in the corner and you'll see a little text there that says activate. And we're going to click activate and then that will be your active theme. And so just another way you can do that is if you go to appearance. Uh, so let's just go back to appearance. You'll see right here our themes. We have several other themes that came with already. And so you can activate them. Right now, Divi is our active theme. Uh, so we can customize it. We can do a lot of stuff with that. But that's that's essentially how you'd get to this point. This is how we have a website set up with Divi. If we go there on the top, so if you just hover over your name, click on visit site, you'll see right here that our website looks very, very boring right now. We have absolutely nothing going on, no pages, no menu. Uh, it really doesn't look good. So we're going to be adding a lot of content to this. But let's first of all click on the little WordPress icon there. It'll bring us back to our dashboard. And we have some things that we want to take care of first. Now, let's go down to our settings and we want to make sure that we named our website. Now, we should have done that with HostGator already, but just in case you want to change the name, it's down here in settings. You can change your site title. You can change right here your tagline. Uh, because it's not secure, you can add a little letter S right there. So HTTPS and then HTTPS right there as well um, if you want to make it secure. So you have SSL, so it's going to say secure on the top. Uh, and then, of course, we can also go down to permalinks. Now, in permalinks, you have a couple options here with how it's going to be set up. When you have a post, I don't usually recommend the date and or day and name. I think that's kind of just a really long permalink. So really what it is is your domain slash and then whatever page is going to be or post is going to be, uh, it's going to be showing up like this. So date slash whatever the name of it is. I usually just recommend going with just the post name unless you have so many similar posts that the date really matters. I think for most people, this is going to be the best way to do that. Now let's save changes. And let's start actually building this website. So if we go up to pages, let's start adding our first new page. And there's a couple ways you can do that. You can go to pages and click add new. Or on the very top, this little 
header bar, you can click on new and you can click on page and it'll bring you to the same thing either way. It's going to bring you to essentially the WordPress editor. So you can edit in WordPress, the default editor, or you can use the Divi builder. Obviously this is a Divi tutorial. So we're going to be using the Divi builder, but first let's add a title. This is our home page, So I'm just going to call it start here. That's going to be just our home page. On the right side, you can put a featured image on there, your excerpt. This is going to be important if you're, you, you know, when you show up on Google, uh, right below. So whenever you Google something, you have like a header and then right below it is going to be a short little description. I recommend adding that in for SEO purposes. We'll touch on that later in the video though. So let's go and use the Divi Builder and see what we're actually working with here. Now it does take a second to open up but we have three options. So we can start building from scratch, which is what I'll, I will be doing for the first page. And then we can choose a pre-made layout. That's what I'll do for the second page. And then lastly, we can clone an existing page and I'll do that for the third page. I'll be making three different pages for this website we're doing right now. And so starting off with the just start building one. All right, so here we are on the Divi Builder and we have a couple of options with how this is going to be set up. Now, the first thing they wanna know is how many columns in the first row. And I'll explain what a row means and a column and the modules and everything in a second. But just to give you guys an example of what we want, let's just start off with a title at the top. So we'll choose a single section or a single row, single column, and we are going to look for a text. And so we're going to select some text right there. And in the text, you can either edit over here and you'll see that it gets a little weird. You can, you can type in there and add stuff, but highlighting it, it generally is a little trickier to edit over there. And I recommend using this little module right here, which you can click and drag around to wherever you want. You can put it on the left side, the right side. I usually leave it on the right side. You could also put it on the bottom if you wanted. Um, but we're just going to put it on the left side. This is your editor. Now this is going to pop up for anything you're editing, the section, the module, whatever it is. And again, I'll explain those in one second. But right here, we have a text module. That's what's really important. And we can edit the text over in this little text box. So I'm going to call this Outdoor Photography Academy. So maybe we want to, you know, it's an outdoor photography academy. We want to teach people how to take photos uh, outdoors, maybe like underwater, stuff like that, whatever it might be. That's what we're going to do. And we have our standard editor right here for text. So we can add it, uh, some block quotes. We can add a link to there. Uh, we can change the text itself if it's in the paragraph mode or if it's a heading. Uh, and for this one, because it's going to be the top of our website, it definitely is a heading. We're going to make this heading one uh, because it's really the name of our business. And we want this to be in the middle. So we can center that. We can uh, center justify that. And you can change some other things if you want. But for this, I think that's really what we want to do. And down here, you can link it, like I said. Uh, we can change the background of that, but I'll just click on the check mark here to show you something. There are three different things. So if we change the background of the text, it'll add a color just in this little gray rectangle, which is really not gonna look very good. So the three things, that the kind of the different tiers you have here, the first thing is the overall section. So this blue area, the blue outline, that is your section. And so you can add a new section below that, and it's nice you can change the full background of that. Uh, so if we just click on the blue box there, you'll see that we can add either a regular section, a specialty section, or a full width section. And I'll talk about those later on in the video. But below that, we have our, our row right here, which is going to be essentially a stack of you can have either one column, two columns, three columns, whatever. We have one column, and so it's just going to be a stack of modules. And so in this column, we have only one module right now. If we click on the, gr the gray plus, we can add another module. And let's just say, just for an example, we're going to add uh, more text below that. So text, we're going to add some more text below that. And it'll show up down there. And then below that, let's just click the check mark. I'll edit that text in a second. Below that, let's add a button. So now we can go and add a button. And these don't look necessarily good right now, but let's go and so click the check mark, go click on this one. So when we want to edit any one of these, whether that is the overall section, the row, or the individual modules, we just hover over them until they're highlighted and we click on the little gear icon. So for this one, we want to change this to just some kind of tagline. So um, find out, let's just say learn, oops, not all caps. learn how to travel the world uh, and take amazing photos for your Instagram. And we wanna make this maybe in the middle so we can go and center that. And then our button down here, and of course I'm gonna make these look a little better as well in a second, but let's go down and change the button. And the button we have, it says, says click here. We can say, uh, maybe instead of click here, we could say, uh, really whatever you want. You can say learn or, or, or get started. 
All right, and this button is going to be maybe get started and then we can add a link to it and we can link it to literally anywhere. And so for the purposes of this right now, we're just going to link to uh, santrellmedia.com slash divi dash checklist. Um, let's actually add the HTTPS colon slash slash. Okay, so that, that's going to be a link right now and we can open that either in a new, in a new tab or in the same window. I'm gonna open a new tab right now. Uh, and we can go and change the design of these. Now, so far, these are not looking good because we only edited the first, the content of each of them. Now let's get into the design of each of them. And I wanna start off with the over the first one, the, the header, the title. So if we go back up, click on the gear icon and we go to design, we can actually go and choose, because this is a header, so right here we have paragraph, uh, we can change this heading one, heading two, heading three, whatever. This right now is a header. So when we go to design, Changing anything in text is not going to change this because it's a header. So what we're gonna have to do is close that and open heading text and choose H1. And this is how we're gonna edit all the heading text in this little block, which is all the text in general. Um, so what we can do is change the font first of all. And I recommend keeping, I mean, maybe the default font is probably the good one right now. And you can change what that default is. Uh, that's just your theme default font. And you know, otherwise you can go and choose individual ones. I don't recommend choosing more than maybe two for your entire website, but let's just see if they have, uh, do they have Calibri? I think that's how you, no, no they don't have that one. Um, but you know, they, they've got, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter which one you choose for the purpose of this video. But we are going to go down and choose uh, I mean, maybe Roboto is a good one, or Sans Serif is a good one. Let's see if we can find Roboto. Roboto. There it is. Uh, so let's just go with that one. It's a pretty basic, plain one. And what we can do is we can change the font weight. So if we want it to be bold, extra bold, or they call it heavy, or medium, we're going to go to bold since it is our, height, our, our title right here. And we can change the color of it. We can change, we already did change the alignment of it. And we can change the heading text size. So let's make it a little bit bigger. And you'll see that if we get it up to maybe like 60, 65 ish pixels, that's a little bit too big. Maybe 60 would be a little better. There we go. So 60 pixels is good. It covers the whole width there. And you'll see that if we go to the mobile view, and so if you just hover over heading text size, you'll see these little bubbles pop up. If we go and click on the phone one, go to phone, you'll see that it's gonna look really weird here. The photography's cut off and we can change the actual font size for mobile or for tablet however we want and it, it'll be different. So you get a different website for a mobile site versus a desktop site. That's another really great feature of Divi that I really like. So we can go and change the font until it lines up maybe something like that. And if we go back to desktop, you'll see it's exactly what like we wanted it to be. So I'm not gonna do that right now. We'll get into that later on in the video but we could change the spacing if we want it to be extra wide or change the height, or we could add a shadow to it. We could add a border, box shadow, all kinds of different things. But for now, this is really what we want to do. And then after that, we want to just click on the check mark. We'll come back and change the font color in a second, but we're gonna go down here and change this one. Now, if we click on the little gear icon, I think you guys get the idea of what we're doing here. This is already centered. We'll go to design. And because this one's not a header, we're gonna go up to regular text. Because again, if you go back here, this is just highlighted, it says paragraph text. This is just paragraph text. So if we go to text, we can change the size of this, we can change the font. Uh, and so again, we want this font to be probably the same one. So Roboto, Roboto, change it to that. Or we can change it to another one that complements that. Maybe like Sans Serif is a really common one. Sans Serif, uh, it looks like they don't have that right now. So Roboto, it is. We're gonna use Roboto with this one. And we can change the font weight. I think this is fine just as it is. And we'll make this one slightly larger as well right there. And maybe we want a little bit less space above that. So you can change things over in spacing right here. And so we have margin and we have padding. And these are kind of confusing to explain to beginners because they're, it's really a subtle difference and it, it kind of just have to explore with it and you'll start to figure out what the difference is. But one of them is going to add space above your, your block and the other one adds it within your block. Uh, so it really only makes a difference if you have like a colored background. But we can add either positive margin on the top and bottom of this. Um, or we can add even negative margin and things will start to move closer. So on this one, if we just go and let's delete that one, uh, we can we can match up top and bottom if we wanted, but again, we could just go and add some negative margin. So negative margin, you'll see it's moving up very, very slowly, but let's just say that's probably good. That's, that's good right there. We want it to be negative 20 pixels, a little bit closer, and I think that looks pretty good. Now we can go down to our button. So let's click on the green check mark uh, to save that. We'll go down to the button and we'll edit this one. So if we go and we just say the button, we want it to be we want it to be centered first of all. I think it looks bad all the way on the left side. So let's go to design. 
go to alignment and make that centered. Uh, then we can change things about the text if we want it to be dark or light. I'm going to select light. It's going to go away for a second, uh, but there's a reason that we want to do that. Then we can go down to button and we can change things like if we want margin above or below that. We can add a box shadow to that. So adding a box shadow, I think, makes it pop up since it's obviously white right now. Um, and we can change the position of it, the blur of it, how big that shadow is, what color the shadow is. But we're just going to leave it just like that for now because I want to add a background on this whole top section. So let's click on the check mark and go up to the blue. So we want the entire section to have a background. So if you think about how you want that to show up, you're going to want it across the entire area, not just in the green area right here and definitely not behind just one of these little modules. So if we click on the gear icon, then we can go up and change the background of the entire section. Now you have a couple options here. If we go to design, you can see a lot of different things with this. We'll get into that later on in the video, but just to put a background on this, we have three options here, the link, don't worry about that one. The background, we have some different ways we could set up the background. So we can set up a solid background if we wanted, just like a, a giant red one. I don't think that looks very good, obviously. We can set a gradient. We could set uh, an image. So let's just get rid of this one. So if we hit the trash icon, get rid of that one. Let's go and set up an image. So if we set up a background image, let's just say add background image. And I have some images here already. But if you don't, there's something you want to do. So go over to the Divi checklist that I showed you guys over here. And if you scroll down, you'll see download sample images to follow along. Just click on that button. It'll download them. It'll look something like this travel photography zipped file. Just unzip it and then over here, if you go to upload files, actually let me close out and just show you guys what I did. So if you click on add background image and then we click on upload files, then we click on select files and then you'll just find that one. It's going to be travel photography. So once you unzip it, so right click and then unzip it. Uh, so you should have an unzip option or extract all. So extract all and then it'll show up like this and we just add all of these images here. Now I already added them so we're going to cancel and you'll see in the media library, this is where they all show up. And so on the top of this website, we need to decide what do we want to have up at the top that would really look good for a travel photography website. So I think maybe this right here would look good. Maybe I'll try it and see if we want to change that. But we can say upload this image. And at first it's going to look really bad because remember I said we wanted to change the text color. But also, this is just a really smashed, kind of hard to see view. So if we hit the check mark, let's go back and change the overall height of this. So if you hover over until you see the blue icon, until it's a you know, really thick bar on the bottom, click it and start dragging it down, you'll see that you can change the size of the top. And I think that looks really good there. Of course, the text is all jammed up at the top, but we can change that right now. So getting back to the text, let's click on the gear icon. And this is actually, I clicked on the wrong icon. If we go over to the text and click on the gear icon on the gray part, then we can actually change the color of this text. So let's go and change the heading text, which is what this is, to white. Uh, so that looks a little better, especially once we bring it down, that'll be very visible. And likewise, let's do that for the other text. I think you guys are really getting the idea here of what we want to do. We'll go to design uh, and we'll go to regular text here because it's a paragraph text and we'll change that to white. And what we can do is we can either add some space above this text here. So either add space, add margin uh, or padding above this text or on the top of this overall, this row. Uh, and so we can go and let's do it for the row just to show you guys how that's actually going to look. So if you clicked on the gear thing for the green box, the green rectangle, it brings you into this here. And you can change the column structure if you wanted, if you wanted to have multiple things in there. Uh, so if we wanted like an image over on the right of, of this text, you can change it. That's really cool. We're not going to do that right now, though. Uh, and of course, we can also go and link it if we wanted. We could change the background. That's not going to look good. So if you do that, you'll see that's the background. We don't want that. Click on the trash icon and get rid of that. Now, what we want to do is go over to design and go to spacing. And again, we have our good friends margin and padding. Uh, and so this one, it doesn't matter which one you want, margin or, margin or padding, really. I'm going to add uh, just some margin to, or some padding to the top. Uh, so if we go and start just adding that until it looks good, you just hold it down or really we make this faster. I'm just going to add it. It's going to be like 200. And so, whoa, what just happened? Okay. I don't know why Divi just got mad when I did that. Let's try that again. Uh, so if we go to design, I think I must have, no, I, I probably had num lock on. That's probably the problem. So if we go to spacing and we go here and we want to add 200, 200. Uh, and there we go. So it looks a little better down there. Maybe 220, 220 might look better. And so I think that's looking a lot better. So let's click on the okay icon there. And there we go. So that's looking better for the beginning of our website. But again, maybe we want this just to be slightly larger text. 
Uh, so we can go and click on the gear icon. We can go to design. We can go to sizing. And we can change the, or sorry, to the heading text. And we can change the size of this from right now it's 60. Let's make it to 65. And now let's undo that. Okay, that definitely was best before. So that's a really simple website, just very simple look already. And you'll see some very subtle things. Maybe we want to change like this button here is very, very small. So it's really important that on the beginning of your website, in almost every website that I've ever been to, every website I've ever made, you usually want some kind of a big call to action in the beginning. And you want it to stand out and really attract attention. So this button is definitely attracting my attention, but it's a little bit too small. So let's go into the design of this one and we can change some things about this button. Um, and so starting off with alignment, we are in the middle, like I said, the text, we're not gonna change that. The button, we're not gonna change the custom styles, but the spacing, maybe we wanna add some more padding above that. So we can go and add some padding above and see here's where you really see that this is showing up inside the button. And so I actually don't wanna add padding inside the button, we wanna add margin above the button. So this is going to move the button instead. So you see if we start adding more and more margin, maybe add like 50 pixels. So if we add like 50 pixels, you'll see that it brings it down a lot farther. Uh, then we can also go down to like box shadow if we want the shadow, which we already do have, but maybe we want it to be a white shadow just so it pops out a little bit more. I think that looks kind of cool actually. And it's it spreads a little too far though. So blur strength could be a little stronger and it could be a slightly smaller. So bring that down, not that far maybe to like, maybe there, maybe that's good right there. So I think that button looks pretty appealing to me. I would probably click on that. We can change it to an outer or an inner shadow if you want it to be on the inside like that. That's also pretty cool. But I think for this one, outer shadow is gonna attract more eyes. Uh, we can add some filters on there. That doesn't really make sense for buttons. It makes more sense if you have like an image background. Maybe for this background, we could do that. Uh, we could also transform it if we wanna change uh, like the shape of it or whatever we want there. And we can add an animation. So maybe if it's going to slide in or I, I don't know, I wouldn't like have it bounce in. That's kind of weird. But just to give you guys an idea, it's going to do that. Uh, we could have it fade in. That's not a bad one either. Slide in. No. Some of these look like an old PowerPoint presentation. So I'm just going to leave off all the animations on this. Now let's click on the OK button there. And that is our first module just right off the bat. Now we don't have a really a good header yet or anything else. So you're getting the idea of what this website's starting to look like though and how this is going to work. So let's go and make sure that this is being saved. Now you'll see on the bottom when you set when you start off, it might be hidden or you might have this full bar already. But if you see the three dots in the purple circle, just click on that, it opens up this entire thing and we can go and save the draft of this page. And of course, if this was already open, you could get rid of it by clicking the X in the middle. And it just kind of makes it nice, nice clean interface that that goes away. And you have some, you know, it does a lot of stuff. So before we go any farther in this tutorial, I want to show you guys uh, just what this can do on the bottom. So you can publish your website if you want this to be out there already. So somebody can just go to this page. It's probably going to be santreltutorials.com slash, I think I call this start here. This would be like start here as the page. Um, or we could just save the draft. That's usually what I recommend doing. We can change things. Uh, I'm not going to do any of this right now. Editing history. If you want to see like what changes were made and you want to go back to them, you could do that right here instead of hitting Control Z a million times. You could just see what you did before. Uh, and so let's say okay. Likewise, you can go into some settings for the page. Uh, you can go over here, and this is going to be like portability. You can delete the page or clear the layout rather. Um, and you can do save to library. If you want to use this as a template on maybe another page, you can save it to your library. We'll get into that later on in the video. And of course, you could go and load from library if you want to add more things. All right, and on the left side, we have the option to view this either in a tablet mode, in a mobile mode, or on a desktop. And I'll talk about how to optimize it for each of those later on in the video. But I think overall, that's a good first start to this home page here. Now, maybe next we want to have like an about me section. So we can go down here and click on the little blue plus. So add a new section and we want to add a regular section. We could add a specialty, a full width, whatever. We're going to add a regular section. And for this one, we want to have maybe like a picture of me and we want to have like who I am, maybe a little paragraph about me. So we're going to choose two columns in this row. And in this row, we want to have maybe on the maybe on the right side. So let's click on the right side first. We want to add an image. So image, click on that. And we're going to delete the image that it comes with. And we are going to go to add an image. And I don't actually don't have any images here. So I'm going to upload a file, uh, select a file to upload. And I think I should have one kicking around. There we go. I think I'll use that one. Just a just a regular picture of me, I guess. And so we will upload this image. 
And something something I noticed is that occasionally when you're trying to add an image from within Divi, it either takes a really long time or sometimes it even fails and says there's problems. Uh, so another way we could do this, just to show you guys a workaround in case this happens to you, uh, we can just close out. We can save everything. So we'll go to the bottom and save the draft. Uh, and then we can go back on the top to exiting to our dashboard. And from our dashboard, if you go down to media, you can easily upload whatever you want from media. It looks like it already uploaded here. It just wasn't showing up for some reason. But you can add new and you can either drag and drop the files here or select your files and upload them from there. Now, going back to the page we were editing, if we go to pages, uh, you'll see that it is showing up right here, the start here page. And we can just click on edit with Divi. It'll bring us right back to where we left off. So scrolling down, you'll see on the right side, we have an image. So let's click on the gear icon and actually add an image that it doesn't right now. It doesn't exist. So we'll click on that, say upload an image. It's going to be a picture of me and we can change the size of this if we want it to be a little taller or shorter. And then to the left, we're going to add uh, some text. So we're going to add first, let's go text. So we're going to add some beginning text. Uh, and this is going to be, let's just say, who am I? Who am I, right? Isn't that the, the, the big question? Um, and then we're going to change that from paragraph to uh, maybe that's like a heading three. Who am I? Heading three. Uh, and then design. Maybe we want to make that like a, a lighter text, maybe a larger, more shadowy kind of text. So we can go to sizing uh, and we can add, or sorry, let's go to rather heading text. And because this is H3, we'll be editing it all right here. So we can change the color to uh, maybe like gray, for example, we want to make that like a medium gray, it could be a little bit more transparent ish if we wanted. Uh, and let's make that a little bit larger. So we can make that semi bold and larger text. So we'll go and make that slightly bigger. Maybe 34 looks fine. Uh, and then below that, let's add some more text of maybe like my name would go below that. Uh, so we can go and click on the plus and add more text. So text. And then we're going to add my name as we're going to make this H2. So heading two. So we're going to say Mike O'Brien. That's my name. And we will add heading two. So heading two. And we can go to design. We can go to heading. And again, I think you guys get the drill by now. Go to H2. Make this black. Make this bold. So we'll make this regular bold and we'll make it a little bit larger, maybe on the order of like 50, uh, maybe 55. Oh, and I forgot to change the font. We don't want this default. We want this Roboto. And let's make it more like 60. Actually 55, let's, let's increase some spacing. It's something we have not done before. So we'll increase the spacing to like maybe six pixels and we'll make this 60. And you'll notice that there's so much, a little too much of a gap above that. So if we go down here to spacing, again, we can reduce the margin above that, have some negative margin. So there's almost some overlap right there. So we just hold the down button. It's going to be going up. And likewise, let's go up to this one. So let's say check. And let's go up to this text here. I forgot to change that font uh, to, to Roboto. So we'll go change it. We go to design, heading text, H2 or H3. And we want this to be Roboto. It's right at the top, Roboto. There we go. And uh, so I think that looks okay right now. Now maybe we want to add like a little, a little paragraph below there explaining who I am. So click on the check mark, and below there again we'll click on the gray box. We we'll go to text, highlight right there. Sorry if there's a lot of like sirens outside. It just tends to be where I live I'm in the, the Philly area and they have so many different sirens all the time. Okay, so right there, small paragraph about myself. Uh, we'll go and change that to Roboto as well. So text, default, we're going to change it to Roboto. Uh, ooh, I don't know where it all went. Let's go and re-add that content. So text. And of course, this would be like a paragraph about like my credentials and my schooling and who I am and what I've done. Uh, but let's just say, you know what, honestly, it doesn't even look that great as it is. I really want like something more aesthetic, something to kind of pop out more. So the next thing that we really should get into is some dividers. Um, so if we go and click on the little icon there, we can see if we add a divider. So divider uh, can be like a line, it could be a shorter line, a wider line, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I want this to be above there. So if we click on OK, we can just click on it. And if we want to click on the little plus icon, a little up and down, 
click and drag it anywhere you want. And likewise, you can click and drag anything on this entire builder anywhere you want. So if you want this text to be above the, the header, you could do that. You can make it below it. I'm just going to leave it right there, obviously. But you can move things really wherever you want. And so with this right here, actually, let's make this uh, centered. Let's try to center it a little better. So uh, we can change you know, the thickness of that and the location of that. But let's first make sure that this looks a little better up here. So let's make this a full width thing by first going to make it centered. And then let's go to design to uh, heading text. And this is H2. And make the letter spacing a little bit larger, slightly larger font so it takes up the whole space. There we go. I think that looks a little bit better. And so now we can go down. So let's say OK to that. And we can change this. Now, if we want to change this little divider, we can change, we obviously could link it out. I think. You know, Divi allows you to link to like the weirdest things. I don't know why you'd ever want to put a link on, on a divider, uh, especially because nobody's going to know what that divider is actually linking to. But we can change the background of it. Don't do that. Uh, but really, if you go to design, this is where you get to, to kind of change what it's going to do. So position, you can have it top or vertically centered, uh, or you can have it at the bottom. Uh, so because it takes up some space here, I leave it at the top usually. And you can change it to solid or a dotted line or a dashed line. We can change the color. I'm going to leave it as black right now. Kind of a theme throughout this is mostly just black and I guess orange and a little bit of blue up there. Uh, so leave this one as black and we can change the sizing here. Uh, so we can change the size. We can change the alignment of it. So if I make it centered and I make it slightly less wide. So instead of auto width, we can go and make it drag that down a little bit. Sometimes the it doesn't really like clicking and dragging. If we go down here, let's just type it in. We're going to go to 50% width and you'll see it's a lot narrower now. So maybe even less wide than that. Let's make it like, I don't know, maybe maybe 40% 40, 40 I think would be good for that one. Just to give you guys kind of a, a cool little divider right there. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to do anything, but uh, just to kind of make it look a little bit better. So let's go down again to sizing and we can change the size of that from 50 to maybe like 35. There we go. And click on the check mark and there we go. So that's maybe what we want that to look like as our next section. All right, now below that, let's just say we want to add something else. So let's go and add a regular one. We'll get into the other ones later on, but maybe this is going to be the different products that I offer. So let's just go and add maybe there's three different ones, maybe, maybe four. It doesn't really matter. Let's just say we let's just choose two and let's just say we want to change that. So I chose two. Oops, didn't want to choose two. You could of course delete it, or you can go to the little row settings and you can say right here you know what I actually really wanted it to be three or four uh, and we want it so let's just choose four and in each one we want these we really want these to be uh, just like basically what products we offer um, but let's just go and add for the first thing I'll go into all these different modules in a minute to show you guys what these do and, and what the other options are but I think for this one we probably want to go with I I think a call to action would be good here. So we have a button, we can have a title. I don't really know what we do with the middle text, um, but let's just go and uh, how about we would add here. So let's start off with the title and the title of this one is going to be maybe photo presets, presets. Um, so for the best photo editing, and then we want to add maybe a button below that. So the button we can click here, we could add like literally any button we want. Um, and so we can go and change what the button actually does. So then if we go down and add the link to the button, we can literally add anything we want. So again, if we just go to, I'm just going to type stuff. It doesn't matter what you type. And it's going to show up with your button there. And so because we want this to really not look like that, I think it looks really bad as it is, we can go to design. Uh, and so for this overall section, we can change the background. Um, and I want to make the background of this one, instead of just this blue color as it is, uh, I think we should really be making this maybe like a photo, for example. So if we go to the beginning, uh, we can delete that blue background and we can go and make it a video, of course, or a photo. And for this, we're just going to make it like, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe this one would be good for that. So let's upload that image. Uh, and so that's going to be our first one. And really, we have too many sections here. Let's go back. And if we want to change this, it's really easy to do. All you do is click on the little section or the row. Uh, and we can just delete different columns. So if we want to get rid of that column, now we have three columns there. And of course, these are all going to be, let's add two more, first of all, just by copying this one. So if we like this one, we can just click on the three dots on the gray part. We can copy the module there. And then we can go here and we can actually paste the module. So we can go and we can paste. Uh, so paste module 
and likewise we can go here and paste the module again so let's paste module that way we have essentially the same thing that we're looking for in all three of them but I don't like how small they are and how much space there is between them and I don't like how it's really hard to read that text so the next really the next level of what we're doing here is let's go and actually change the background uh, to have maybe a gradient on top of the picture so if we go from here uh, we go to the background down here uh, we can go over to gradient and we can add a gradient as you'll see gradient we could choose uh, you know maybe these two colors and we can change the opacity of them just by clicking on them and dragging this one down the right slider brings your opacity down a little bit so it's a little bit more transparent maybe this one's a little bit more transparent than that and on the bottom you can place the gradient above the background image so now it's suddenly significantly easier to see and of course we could just go and make this one a little bit you know change the opacity like that uh, so now those are easier to see for sure still not the best to see probably some of that is going to be because of the size uh, but let's just say okay to that and then let's change the other two so if we want to change this one uh, we can change this one from photo, photo presets to um, lighting lighting uh, tutorial so maybe how to do better lighting uh, and so for best photo lighting or whatever it doesn't really matter what we say down there I don't really care about this um, but we're gonna go to then background let's change the background image here so let's delete it add a background image and maybe this one's going to be uh, maybe this photo here I think that one looks pretty cool so we'll use that one in the middle that one really might not even need uh, you know that that kind of layer on top of it the gradient but we could add it if we wanted to so we can add a gradient uh, it's similar gradient to what we had maybe this one's a little bit more opaque or a little bit less opaque uh, so we can bring it down and we'll add this one on top of the background so there again you can see it if you wanted to do that I'm gonna bring this down even more so because I think the background image already did look pretty good but we want it to be consistent between uh, the different little buttons down here so there we go so it's a little bit easier to see that one and there we go I think just like that it's starting to look pretty good there we go I think that one looks good and then let's go to the third one here and again I'll, I'll touch up on the on the font and everything in a second uh, but let's go and add change this one to again another another background so delete that one add a background image and this one could be this right here so we'll change it up make it look a little bit different over here and for this one we can uh, go to gradient we can add a background gradient that's the default gradient we'll add it on top of everything and change the opacity so we can see the background so we'll bring it down to there and we'll bring this one down to there as well and let's just change maybe this color could be more of like a, a reddish maybe you know you get the idea of how you can do those three different things but now you'll see like I said before I really don't like how these look because they're so there's such a giant gap between them I really don't like that so if we go into settings for the row we can really start to change the design of this uh, including like the spacing and the borders uh, and really everything that we don't like about this right now so let's start off with the content uh, you'll see that we're good with having these three columns we could rearrange them if we wanted so if we wanted this one in the middle just click and drag them right there you could click and drag them here as well it's just easier uh, over doing it on the left side we could link things if we wanted I, we already have the buttons are our links um, and then we could also go over to design now design is what I think would probably look best what we're really gonna be fixing here so let's go to sizing uh, and we can use a custom gutter width so right now it's just kind of weird like that so if we say yes we can change that to something much lower let's just change it to like one for example and then they're like touching so that is looking a little bit better um, and then we could equalize column heights sure they're already doing that uh, the width we could bring it all the way up to a hundred percent so it's a little bit wider so we'll say okay and then below that if we want this to be taller because these definitely need to be significantly taller you can just click on maybe for this entire section uh, we could bring them down so let's just go and drag this one down to maybe there uh, and then let's bring these down to their same height to right there all right now I did actually decide that it was probably better to have some spacing in the middle I think it looks a little bit better if they're not touching just because the images look so different uh, but now you'll see again this is just really high up I don't like how high this text is so I think you guys get the idea of what we're doing here we're gonna go to advanced uh, or design rather sorry and then we want to go down to spacing and this is where you'll see the difference now if you can guess do you want margin or padding on the top of the call to action uh, the answer is actually going to be padding so you add some padding on the top so it moves the entire thing down otherwise it's going to be moving with the background as well so we are going to add some more padding on the inside of this uh, so let's bring it to maybe like 60 or maybe it's probably gonna be like 100 
So let's see what 100 looks like. Yeah, 100 looks pretty good. Uh, so let's just save that one. We'll go to this and do this as well. Now, there is a fast way if you just made this one and you wanted to copy it for the rest. You could easily do that uh, very quickly just by copying the settings. And I'll show you guys that in just one second. Let's go and make this one look good as well. So we'll go to sizing um, and we'll go, or spacing rather, and we will go and add something on the top. So we're going to add 100 of padding on the inside of this. And then likewise with the last one, we'll go and add 100 pixels of padding to the top of this one. So design, we'll go to spacing, and we'll add on the top 100 pixels. And I don't know why we added that on the bottom. Let's get rid of all that. So we will say save. And there we go. So that's looking a lot better. And all right, now I really don't like having a white section right next to a white section. So just to kind of break that up, maybe we'll go and click on the blue button right there. We'll add a regular one. Let's not worry about what we're adding in there just yet. I just want to add a background on this. So if we go to section settings, uh, the background, we can add an image, change the background image. And for this one, maybe we will add a mountain range. Yeah, well, no, let's go with this one. So it kind of fades up to white. I think that looks kind of cool, actually. Uh, so if we choose it in the right location, we can make it fade up to white. Also, our little box seems to be a little bit off. So let's go and put it back where it belongs. There we go. So the background image, we could cover it. We could fit it. Uh, so fit, obviously, is not. It's just because it has a really small height right now. Or we could go to actual size, which is ginormous. Uh, so we're going to just go to cover right now. And we can change the, the location of this, as you see. So we can have this a little bit lower. We can have a custom location. We could say, uh, so center, we could say bottom center, say bottom center, uh, or we could say top center. I think top center is really what I'm looking for. Uh, so top center, uh, it's going to be super white there. Um, and so, you know, you have some options. Now, if we want to actually drag that down a little bit, actually, realistically, center, center is what we care about. Let's just go to center right there. Uh, and we want to maybe add like a parallax effect, which I think would look really cool. Uh, so as people scroll, it kind of, you'll see as you scroll, stuff happens. It's really hard to see because it's a little bit too high right now. Uh, so we can go and actually drag this down and make this height a little bit, a little bit larger. There we go. So as people scroll, you should be able to see more of that background. Uh, but of course, the sky being so large is going to kind of limit that. There we go. For some reason, it just disappeared. But there we go. We can see the whole thing now uh, in the background. Some, so one thing, Divi, like I said, I, I think I might have said this before. It's very, very powerful. But it definitely has a few little quirks here and there where things just kind of get buggy. Uh, it's not really necessarily Divi. It's kind of just WordPress and Divi combined. Um, you know, it just... If anything goes wrong, just kind of figure it out, click it, and you know, save it and close it, open again. For the most part, Divi works very well, and I, I really do like using it. So let's go down here, and so we have our background. Um, we have our parallax there, uh, which means we can't really resize it. It's just going to be where it is. All right, so you know what? Actually, let's just make this a little bit larger so we can have uh, something else going on here. So you'll see that it's still focusing so much on the top. I really don't like that. But you know what? Let's just change this picture. This picture is not good for that. We'll go to, or wait. Oh, now it's being good. Look at that. <laughs> okay. For some reason, it was being weird before. It looks like it's fine now. Okay. So let's add a title in the middle of that. So you'll see that we do have a row that it just wants something to be there. Uh, so we can add uh, a title. And this title, you know, just go to text again. Uh, this one's not going to be especially exciting. Um, or you know what? Let's add some testimonials. That's probably a good idea. Let's add some testimonials right here. Uh, in this testimonial, why don't we make it more than one testimonial? Let's add like a row of maybe maybe three of them. So if we go up here, uh, we can make them three vertically like this from different rows. Uh, so you can have multiple rows in a section if you want, or we can have multiple columns in this row, which is really what I think I want to do for testimonials. So we can go up to the settings for this row and go to the column structure. And let's have three columns and each one is going to be a testimonial. So for here, we can go and edit this testimonial, click on settings, and we can say job title. So we could say this guy's like taste tester of Oreos. And the name could be like Joe Smith. And they could say, I love taking photos of my Oreos now. And we can add an image, of course, as you see here, image. And this image could be, maybe this is Joe Smith right here. That's him. So that's his image. We can add another one over here. Uh, so we could actually just duplicate this by clicking a little copy icon. Uh, and we can have another one below it. And let's actually, I kind of like this idea. Let's copy it again and take this one. Uh, let's move it over to here, though. So maybe we'll have a longer one. Uh, and so this one could be a longer testimonial. So you could say uh, some more dummy text, 
copy paste. So that could be a longer testimonial there. And let's change their image to image. Maybe this one's going to be my picture. Maybe I wrote a lot about my own thing. And maybe this one down here is going to be another testimonial from uh, you know, someone else. I don't actually have, oops, didn't mean to duplicate that. Uh, we can go and change the image of this one. You guys are getting the idea here of what we're actually trying to do. Uh, so let's get rid of that, add an image of, uh, you know, this one could just be whatever image we want. How about that one? Save. And then down here, let's get rid of that one. Or you know what, we're going to need another one over here anyway. So let's go up and add that one right there. And you know what, actually, now that I'm on it, I think what we want to do is we could we could change this up a little bit more. So we could add this below. And for this, let's get rid of this over here. And why don't we say something like see what our customers are saying. Um, so text. And we'll say see what our customers see what our customers are saying about us and we'll make this one into heading three uh, and we can go to design heading text you guys remember how to do this by now so we'll go to from default we want it to be roboto uh, which is what we're using right here we can go and change it to slightly more bold uh, we can change the font size to uh, make it make it like 60 I think and we could change actually that's a little bit awkward for spacing um, so let's see what we can do right here so what we can do is change the width of these so we can move it in a little bit I think this one actually is what we want we just want this one to be wider so we'll drag it till it's a little bit wider so we go right there See if we can get it. Sometimes it's really hard. There we go. Width, auto. It's 100% width right now. All right, so to make this wider, I'd probably say use a custom gutter width. So we can go and make this like two, or we can make it, uh, we could make it one if we want them to touch again. So one, not 21, one. I uh, would make them all significantly closer right there. I think probably two is good. Let's make it two. Um, and so the width, we can bring it up to 100%. So it's as wide as we can make it. Say okay. And this, again, still doesn't look quite right. So I think we're going to have to change the font size, unfortunately. Let's go and change the font size. Let's also add some buffer above this as well. So let's go to settings. Let's go to design, heading text. And we are going to change the font size from what it is right now. Actually, H3. So it's at 60. We can change it to maybe like 50. Slightly smaller. That's good. Uh, and I think that looks a lot better. All right, now that's still, all right, now this text is still too high. So if we go into settings, uh, we can go over to design, we can go to spacing. And again, do you know which one this is actually going to be? This one probably should be padding. So we'll add some padding on the inside of this text. Otherwise, it's going to move everything down. So let's add uh, maybe 100. Would that be too low? Mm, I'd say that's probably, that's probably about right. And this text, of course, is kind of harder to see. So we could go and change some other things about the text as well. So like the heading text here, maybe we want to add like a shadow to it uh, just so it's a little bit more visible. And of course, we're editing the wrong text here. We want to go to H3. We want to add a shadow for H3. There we go. And maybe the shadow should be probably white, I would say. So shadow should be white just so it's a little bit easier to see. Again, I don't really think that shadow, maybe a glow would look a little better. Uh, we can make this a little bit mm, a little stronger. There we go. Just so it's slightly easier to read that. There we go. So now we have some testimonials here. Uh, we get Joe Smith twice, uh, actually three times. Um, but there we go. So, so far, this website's definitely starting to come together. You're seeing how it looks, you know, pretty professional with really almost no effort at all. I like how this photo has white at the top and the next one doesn't. That's usually what I kind of look for. So one section kind of just flows seamlessly into the next. And you can see that parallax effect on there, I think also makes it look pretty cool. All right, so now I want to talk about some of the other things we can add in here. I know I showed you a lot of the different modules, but just because we have most of the website kind of already populated on the on the home page here, let's go down and add another section and just see what we can actually add before we get into specialty and full width uh, sections. So if we go to a regular one, we'll just add a single row or single column row. Uh, and so some of the different things we have. So accordion is going to be like this, where you can kind of open and close different things. So you see the plus icon there, you can open and close it. Uh, and so you'll have like a different accordion item. And so each item, you'll have like a title. And then when you open it, it has, so really, the way you see this is like FAQs, for example, is where it's really, really common. Um, where you'd have like a question and then they open it just by clicking the plus or clicking the whole thing in general. And it shows you just kind of the answer to their question, for example. 
Uh, so that's that's one thing right there. That's called accordion. If we want to add, let's say, something below that, uh, let's just check out the other things we have. So click on the gray plus. Uh, audio is going to be, if you want to add just like a, a clip from maybe an MP3 or something like that, so music, you can add blog, which is going to be your blog posts. And I'll show you guys how to actually make the posts later on. Uh, but right now it says no results found. It's going to be like a kind of an array of all your different blog posts will show up right here. Uh, and it'll link out to the post itself. So this is not going to be writing a post within here. It's just going to be how you would want to link out to your posts from within this page. So the other things we have bar counters are really similar to what I showed you guys uh, earlier. I think I might have shown you them um, where it's just going to be like your progress bar. And this is going to just show you uh, essentially like, you know, you could use this for I mean, really, the only example I would think of is like if you're trying to rate something. So if you're like uh, if you're if you're talking about travel, uh, maybe just travel in general and you're like uh, Yosemite National Park and you'd say uh, maybe housing and you could see like how hard it is to get a cab in there and it's like you know 50% good for this or you know 80% for this and maybe you could say food in the valley is like scoring a 90% right so you could just kind of use these however you want um, I don't typically use them that much but kind of going along with that similarly so we can find that uh, it's down here if we go to I think just circle percentage one so circle counter as well that's your percentage kind of doing the same idea but it's going to be in a circle instead Call to action uh, is really nice. So uh, without getting too out of order, blurb, we'll talk about that one real quick. Blurb is going to be like an image, uh, a title, and then some some text down there. Really common. It's probably something we could have used uh, really anywhere on this entire page. So right here, probably could have used it just as well if we didn't want the background photo. Um, but this, of course, comes with a button, which I, I really wanted in that section. Uh, so the blurb is not necessarily coming with a button, uh, but you could link out the image or the text or really whatever you need to there. So let's go and close that out uh, and we can delete that. We can delete this one as well. And then what I was about to talk about before I got distracted there is the call to action is really similar. And that, that's what we showed up here where these are all call to actions where you have a button, you have uh, just your, your text and your your header on the top. Um, so they're actually very useful. I use those all the time in a lot of different websites. Um, and other than that, so let's click on the plus icon. And we have a lot of other things that are going to be a little bit less used down here. So comments are good. Some code, if you have, uh, to, for example, if you got a plugin that would allow you to do maybe like a, 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 like a quiz, for example, if I've ever tried to embed a quiz, then you would add code right here. And they're going to give you a little piece of short code to put in there. Um, and the quiz is going to pop up. Uh, so it's a good way to integrate with third party stuff that's not in Divi. So if these modules are not enough, the code can give you really anything else you want. We can have comments, we can have a contact form. I'll talk more about forms later on. We can have a countdown timer, uh, a divider, as I showed you guys above, email opt-in, similar to contact form. Uh, we can go down and see a gallery. Uh, we can go to login image. We already used image quite a bit in this. We can see maps. We can have a menu. Uh, I'm actually going to add menus other places like a header menu. We do need to have that. And other things we can have are maybe like a number counter, you know, a post navigation if you want to add some anchors, stuff like that. Uh, you know, pricing tables. Pricing tables are actually pretty useful. I think a lot of people would be using this quite a bit. Uh, or at least like once or twice on their website. We can have search. I usually don't recommend having search on your website j just because it's usually better if they just either navigate through buttons really easily or they find it from Google because searching on websites tends to not work especially well. Uh, and of course, we can have sliders for like, you know, video sliders or maybe a social media follow. That's actually a good one to have. And you can add some different social networks. This is something that we'd really want to have on a footer, for example. Um, and so we could make a footer section right now. Uh, and so actually, let's just do that. And I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So let's delete the section we have that just, you know, when I was showing you different stuff, and we will add a footer section right now, we'll get rid of this down here in a minute. So we'll go down to regular, and this footer we want to add, um, maybe, maybe, maybe two different things. So we'll have um, on the right side, maybe we want a map showing where we are. So if we just say map, you know, bring up a map there. Uh, and the map you can you can change all kinds of stuff. So where the location actually is, So we're gonna say, okay, and then on the left side, we can add uh, maybe some social, social media follow. Uh, and then we can add maybe like an email opt in. So sure, we can add we can flesh this out and add all the different social media icons we want. I'm not going to go into that guys, I think by now, you kind of get the idea of how you'd want to arrange this. So you, you kind of figure out that you know, you want you want to like center it, you want to change your background. Uh, if you want to go into the design the alignments like right there, so that's how you'd center it, you can change the size the icon stuff like that, you, you get the idea. I'm not going to dive too much into how to change each individual thing. But let's just say we want to have a form here as well. So let's add a form. Uh, so let's just say email, email opt-in. So email opt-in could be something we would add. 
And so this looks a little bit disproportional. Let's take this and drag it down below. So we want uh, maybe the social icons to go below, below. Did they do it? Yeah, they're there. And then maybe we want the map to be slightly larger. Uh, didn't mean to do that. Sometimes if you don't drag this exactly right, it starts adding like margin below and we really don't want to do that. We want to change the height of this map. So click on it. There we go. So now we can change the height of the map so that they're about the same height. Uh, and so when we go into your actual email form, we have quite a few options. So you can change um, your, I don't know why that's moving. I don't want that to move. So we can actually change the fields on this. We can change the title. So sign up up for our email list. And the button could say subscribe. And we could add some text in here that says what we're trying to do. Uh, we can add some footer stuff, the email account, where it's going. And of course, really what you'd want to do is uh, you'd probably want to integrate it with MailChimp. And in order to do that, you will need your API from MailChimp. And I showed you guys that in a full MailChimp tutorial. If you guys are interested in that, so if you clicked add, it's going to ask for your API key and the name of the account. I'm not going to do that right now just because we're not actually connecting this to my MailChimp account. Uh, I think that'd be kind of weird to do uh, for a sample website. But like I said, very easy to do where you find your API. I showed you guys in that other video. So that's how you'd probably want to do this maybe on a footer down here. Uh, but maybe we really don't like the design of this. So we can go back to the background right here. And uh, we can change the background of this little section to maybe nothing. Maybe we don't want a background. Uh, actually, <laughs> Turns out all the font was white. So we'll just set it as a black background there. And so some other things we want to do, maybe we could add like some, some rounded edges. I really didn't show you guys uh, on any of these buttons or any of these blocks how to make the rounded edges. This is mostly just a square website here. But if you wanted to, uh, you could very easily change that. So starting with maybe the button at the very top, we could go into settings. Uh, and if you go over to design, you get some different options for how to add rounds to it. So if you go down to button, you can turn on custom styles and it allows you to do some more things that are a little bit more unique, changing the border, the changes and stuff like that. And the border radius, you can actually increase that uh, to something maybe like 13 pixels, for example. And you'll see it's a little more rounded on the edges. I generally recommend keeping a, co a consistent border radius uh, on pretty much everything in your entire website. So maybe the next thing for doing 13, let's just make it an even 15 pixels. I guess that's an odd number, but you know what I mean. So maybe we want to make this one. We'll go to this. We can add a border on this one as well. Go to design, go to border, and we'll change the radius to uh, 15. 15. And it makes it 15 on all of them. Just a little bit more consistent. Likewise, we can do this uh, you know, on all of these. You guys really probably get the idea by now. So I won't do it on too many of them. But you know, if you go to each one, you should go to design. And then somewhere in there, you should find border or something like that. And should be able to add a, a radius. So it has a 15 pixel radius on there. So we'll say OK to that one. Uh, and for some reason, it, oh, there we go. It's back. Um, so that's really what we'd be looking for uh, if you want to add a radius to everything else. Like, you know, I think these pretty much everything looks better when you have a radius on there. I think it just kind of gives it a, a more uh, a more gentle appearance to it rather than just like a harsh square website as you see right here. It kind of looks like it was made in like 2001. Um, but with the, with the radii on there, I think it generally looks pretty good. So back, back to the bottom though, uh, once we have this section, this one doesn't particularly look great because we don't have a, a background on it. Uh, so let's go to the section settings and maybe we'll change the background to a solid black, for example. Uh, and in that case, we can actually go back to the, the little email form and get rid of the background on that. We don't need a duplicate background. We can go to content, go down to background, and we can go and click on the transparent background. Now, with this section, something we can do that I, I think is really cool is if we want this to be like a footer everywhere, we can go in right here and we can easily just kind of copy this and save it to library, use it anywhere else we want on the website. So saving to library, we can name this main footer, main footer, and we can make it a global item. And making a global item means that if I edit this one right here and I used it in the library on something else, maybe another page, then it will change on every single page that this is showing up on. And so really what I mean is like if I go maybe not to ruin this website already, but if we go right here and we want to add a section between these two, see if I can get there it is, uh, we can add from library. And right now we have main footer is the section I saved in the library. Now, if I go down to the bottom, even if these were on different pages, and I changed this one, and then I saved it, then this one up here should also change because it is a global item, meaning that across your entire website, they change together. 
So I'm going to delete this just because it doesn't really fit in right there. And we will go down here and click on the three dots and click on Save Draft. And now I would say that so far this website is definitely making some progress. If we go back to the wireframe view, you'll see that for the most part, I follow a really similar pattern on everything where you have, you know, a section, only a single row per section usually. That, that's generally what I do. Um, but if you wanted, the reason you'd have multiple rows in the same section is if you really wanted to have like a single column and then below that maybe two columns. Uh, so like right here, if we wanted a header above this, what we'd want to do is actually go and add another row above that. So if we go back to the main view, I'll just show you guys what I'm talking about. Maybe like for right here, if we wanted to have uh, like a, a header, maybe this was supposed to be a header above that, uh, you can't just drag it above there. Instead, you have to add another row. So we'll add another row. Uh, we're gonna make this a single row here. And for this row, we're going to not worry about what it is. We'll go and copy this text here. Or we can just click and move this text actually to this other one. So if we just click and drag it, click that, drag it to this row here. And actually we want this row to be on the top anyway. So we'll click and drag this row to the top there. And so there we go. So that's how you'd have in one section with one background, how you could have uh, some multiple, you know, some multiple rows. Uh, so this is one row that has a single column and this one is a row with three columns. So that's really why you'd have multiple rows within the same section. Uh, so you can have that same background there and you see it starts to look a little bit more complicated here with different rows and text and then this one doesn't have anything in it. We could add something else in there if we wanted. Uh, so maybe for example, just to show you guys what it could look like if we wanted to have uh, maybe like a person. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I've never actually used person. I'm not really sure exactly what that one is going to do. Um, but you can add like name, position, and then your, your profile URL, Google, Google plus. So this is a little outdated right there, but you guys get the idea of what you could do. Uh, and you probably should be able to add an image so we can add an image in here as well. Uh, so image right there, upload an image. And so this is going to show you just like a person. It's going to be really similar to what I was doing up here, except it just makes it all in one single profile. If you want to have like, you know, who we work with, you could have like the name and then a little bit of about them below. Uh, so you could say like, for example, if this was our team. That would be a great way to use this right here. Now, obviously I'm kind of ruining this website. And it looks a little weird now, but you guys get the idea of what we're trying to do here. So we're going to save this, go down to save draft. And then when you're done, you can just go up to the WordPress icon and it'll bring you back to the dashboard. All right, so now we have one page set up. Now let's just go back and I wanna talk about setting up a menu and a header on the top of the page. And in order to do that, I'm just gonna make a couple new pages that are not actually doing anything. I'm just gonna make some dummy pages, call this one, uh, we're just gonna say about us and we are going to not even do anything with this one, just publish it. We're gonna publish this page and just leave it as it is. We'll go back to WordPress and make a couple more pages. So we have this one, uh, which is Oh, this is just a draft. Actually, we can go and uh, publish the one that we had. So if we go to edit, you just go up to the top right and make it public. So public, and we can publish this one. That way we can see it when we actually go on our site. And uh, honestly, guys, this is all stuff that is uh, more WordPress related for, for like right now. Um, so let's say we could, we could view the page if we go, if we want to do that. I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, but let's go back and add maybe like one or two more pages. So we'll add another one. Uh, and this one's going to be, I don't know. I mean, what do you think another one would be? Maybe maybe uh, out, maybe contact, and then uh, publish that one, so publish it. And then lastly, how about we just make like, I don't know, let's just make one more, and this one's going to be uh, maybe like employment or something, jobs. You know, somebody wants to work with us, publish that. That way we'll have a couple that we can have showing up on the top that will actually be uh, in the header. So if we go back to WordPress now, into da uh, the dashboard, and we go on down to appearance, you can see menus. And so menus, uh, we have quite a few options here. Right now there is no menu, so we have nothing on the header at all. And so what we wanna do first is we want to create a menu. So we're gonna call this one uh, primary header, or we're gonna say header one, header one. We're gonna create this menu. And in this menu, it's gonna show up with a couple options on the left. You can put pages on here, which is what I want to do. Uh, so I wanna have all the pages, we're gonna add them to the menu and they will be showing up right here. Uh, then we can go down and you can see some posts if you have anything that you really wanna be showing up there, some custom links if you wanna just link out to, uh, it could just be like a PDF download if you wanted to have one that was like uh, uh, like image, you could say download. 
and this could be like just a PDF that you uploaded as media. I'm not going to get into that too much in this video. And then you can go down to categories. If you have like a category for a whole bunch of articles that are in a specific category, you can have that linked on the top as well. Now, over here, our menu is all weird and out of order. So we're going to start with start here. Actually, we want this to be our home page. So it's probably not going to be on the menu. So let's go and remove this one. And then these we can say we want like about us and then maybe we want uh, jobs is going to be like a subset of that one. Uh, or maybe no, how about contact is going to be uh, a sub page of that one. So you have a drop down menu right there. And because we only have two right now, I probably do want to add uh, a custom link. So maybe we'll add, let's just save this menu. And then let's just go up just so I can show you guys uh, how to add another link on there. We'll go up to media and I'm going to just add new and you can add a PDF or a zipped file, whatever you want. We're going to say select files and right here, I just have a zipped file. This is the one that we downloaded before uh, and just so uploading a zipped file, obviously you can't upload an entire folder, but if you zip it, then it becomes a file uh, in the eyes of the computer. So we have this right here and what we can do is click on that and it has a link. So we'll just copy this URL. So we'll go and copy it. So control C and we can close it. And if we go back down to appearance, down to menus, uh, we can say, uh, let's add a custom link and we'll say download images. And we want this to be, we're going to paste the link we just copied and we're going to add that to the menu. And so now somebody can just click on that on our header on our menu and it'll just be, it'll download the, that zipped folder for them. So menu settings, we can have this as our primary menu. So we're going to save that. So we're saving our menu. And now the next thing we do is we can actually go through and customize some of the appearance, but I want to go down to Divi right here. And so in Divi, we have quite a few options that I really haven't touched on in this video at all. So first of all, the logo, we don't have a logo set up on the top of our website and we really should be getting that. So we're going to upload a logo. Uh, I already threw one in here, just a cheap little one, uh, literally just threw a mountain on a picture really quick. Uh, and we can change things like the navigation bar on the top. We could have it fixed or we could have it scrolling. Uh, so it disappears. I'm going to leave that as fixed for now. I'm not going to get too much into these uh, more advanced settings. So we really shouldn't be worrying too much about these. But if you go to navigation, uh, you can see that you are excluding some, you could exclude pages if you wanted uh, from the header. But otherwise, here, let's go and check out our site with that new header there. So you'll see that with the new header showing up on the top. So you have about us jobs and download images. Um, but you'll notice that the page we made is not actually here right now. Uh, it's not our home page, but we could go find it. I think I called it start here. I think it's what I called it. It should be showing up uh, probably right here. It might take us to an error page. Nope, there it is. Okay, so on this one, however, we do not have the header. I mean, it's there, but you just really can't see it. It's it's a transparent header and it has the Divi logo on the top left. So we should be editing that. Uh, we'll, we'll be fixing the header all and we'll also be making that our home page. Uh, but you can go from navigation down here. Uh, you'll see a couple options. So you have categories. Uh, you've got general settings. You can go to the builder. Uh, layout ads, SEO, uh, stuff like that. I'm not going to get into this, like I said, but all of your settings are here if you want to see them. Save changes. I actually think that because I didn't save changes, that's probably why the logo is different. See if our logo shows up here. Um, there it is. So our logo is now showing up. Again, really small, really terrible logo. But you get the idea of how that's going to show up. And likewise, all of your, uh, so About Us has a drop down. You really can't see it because that is not, uh, it's not really looking so great. It's, 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 it's not the right color. It's transparent. So we can go in and actually edit the theme now. So you can go down to from theme options. You have theme builder. Don't worry about theme builder. We're not really going to do that in this video. We want to go to theme customizer. Um, so if we go down to theme customizer, it'll bring us into this kind of different page here. And this page right here is where we can actually see our website on the right side. And on the left side, we'll see the settings for our website. So if we go to general settings, you can go to site identity. And something you'll notice is on the top, it has the host gator icon right there. That's not what your website should be showing. Um, it looks really tacky, honestly. And so what we probably want to do is actually go and select a site icon. And so for this, again, a logo usually does just fine. So we select it. And once we save it, uh, it'll be showing up on the top of the browser for whatever people are using. So it already showed up there, as you can see. So we're going to save this one. We can publish it. 
Um, and there's quite a few other settings we should be doing uh, in here as well. So layout settings, you can see uh, nothing too exciting here. It's just going to be basic row height, um, you know, gutter width, things like that. If you want to change the default here, typography and background, we changed all of that individually on the pages we made. So we shouldn't really worry about doing that too much here. You could just, you know, set a generalized, uh, you know, font and stuff like that here if you wanted. And in the long run, that probably is advantageous. But if you're just making one or two pages, you don't necessarily need to worry about uh, doing that right away. Now, as far as the header, uh, so right up here, we have uh, the, the primary menu bar is what's showing up on the top. Uh, and so we can make it full width, we can hide the logo if we wanted, uh, we could, I feel like I don't want it full width, actually, but let's bring the logo back. And uh, we can do some things. So we can change like the menu height, if we want this to be a little bit taller. Uh, so we can show if your logo is really tiny, maybe that's kind of necessary to do that. Uh, and likewise, the background color, the background color could really be something other than just this transparent, uh, like purple or whatever it is right now. So we could make it, you know, partially transparent, but maybe, I mean, honestly, I don't know why they didn't just make it like white and partially transparent or black and partially transparent. I think that would look a lot better. So the menu background color, actually, again, let's just bring it over to black and make it a little bit transparent. And so that way, when you go here, uh, you'll... You should, let's, let's, so let's publish it first and see what it looks like. Now, if we go over here and refresh the website, it should be showing up with a black menu bar on the top. But of course, now we can't see any of the text on there because it's all black text. So right here, you'll see text color. We can select that, make that a solid white. Uh, so that's going to be solid white there. And we don't want that. We want that to be uh, completely saturated or, or opaque rather. Um, and then we can change the, the font size. Uh, so make that a little bit bigger, maybe 15. Um, and so that'll be showing up a little bit better there. Again, it doesn't really look good here. So maybe we don't want the scrolling, um, the scrolling header as we talked about before. We might just want like a fixed header possibly. Uh, but otherwise, we are going to save this and we'll go back. And we have other things like uh, header elements. We can go back to the secondary menu um, and we can change quite a few things even with that. If you want it to be uh, not just listed on the top, you can have menus on, on the side or, or you, know, uh, you know, on the bottom and the footer, lots of different places to put these different things. So uh, you could have vertical navigation if you wanted. That's fairly popular these days and you can change if it's on the left or right. Um, I'm just going to leave this one on the top for a basic header uh, for these purposes. And likewise, we can go down to the footer and we can choose uh, like what's actually going on in the footer. Uh, this one I really don't like at all. So the footer menu, uh, I mean, you can change the colors and stuff like that here as far as like widgets go. Uh, you can adjust them. Really right here is not going to be the best spot to really edit this. Uh, so we'll touch on that in a minute. But let's go back and see other things we have. So within your basic, you know, in your, in your theme uh, template here, what you can edit, you can change the color schemes, you can change the buttons, the widgets, the menus, and the home page settings. Now, home page, notice how right here, this is just some random page that we have not edited yet. Uh, and this is really not looking good. So I think instead of the latest post, we probably want to make this a static page. And as far as static pages go, we probably want it to be our start here page. Uh, and that's going to give us this. This is exactly what we were looking for. Now, you'll see here that suddenly uh, our, our homepage looks significantly better. I, I still don't like the logo up there. I mean, mostly just because the logo sucks. Uh, so if it was a nicer logo, it would look better. But you get the idea of how this would work. So I think instead, uh, let's just go, you know what? Screw it. Let's, go, let's, just hide, let's just hide the logo. Let's just hide it. Sorry, guys. We're, we're hiding that logo up there, um, which sucks because we want people to be able to navigate back home. I'll probably have to add that over here uh, on the menu instead. So let's publish this, and that's what it's looking like right now. So now if we just go to uh, our home page, just that, it should be popping up with the right little uh, icon on the top, our logo. Yes, uh, it's showing up with the menu right there. And this is the drop down I was talking about where because we made contact a sub menu of about us, it's going to be showing up in the little drop down there when you hover over it. We can also go to jobs. And if we click on download image, let's see what happens with that. So then if we click on download images, let's see what happens. And you'll see right here, it does actually download the zipped file that we uploaded there. It doesn't matter any file you want. It could be a PDF, it could be a PowerPoint, it could be really any files you're trying to, you know, uh, give to your customers or your visitors. You can very easily put it right up there. So as soon as they click, it just downloads it for them. Uh, and then they can do whatever they need with it. And I think that's a really nice way to integrate something on the top if that's a focus for your website. So, so far we have our homepage and the other pages we really don't have yet. But let's take a look at if we were going to make a blog post. And also something else to note is you'll see right here it says not secure because I actually still have not gone back to 
uh, the if we go back to the website or to the dashboard, uh, we do have to add the letter S down somewhere. It's really such a subtle thing that we need to add. We already have an SSL certificate on here, but if we go down to settings and literally all we have to do is add the letter S right there and right there. And if we go down to save changes, then it should be really no problem at all. There we go. And then we just have to sign back into WordPress and now we should be getting a little lock, lock icon on the top. Uh, so if we go back and make sure everything's published, make sure we, we saved our changes and we should be able to go back here. And for the most part, depending on if it's not going to show up right now, it's probably just because we have uh, the browser cookies are on. So uh, if you open a new browser and you go back to this, it should have a little lock icon and say that it is secured. Um, so maybe like incognito window or something like that, or, or just literally a different machine altogether, different laptop, and that would show you that. Now, if for some reason it didn't, it would probably be related to the images you have on here. So if you had any links to images um, that were not uh, encrypted, they did not have the S on there, then that would be the only flaw and the only reason that you have a problem. It's, it's really easy to fix that. There are other tutorials on that. I can I can link some down below if you guys are interested. Uh, but now let's actually talk about some of the other things we can do uh, with this. Now, first of all, one of them is that we're looking at a, a desktop uh, a desktop website right now. Now, if this was not a desktop, if I'm using a phone, which a lot of people are using phones, then we want to make sure that it's still looking good for uh, any mobile users or even any, any tablet users for that matter. So if we go to posts or we go to pages, we go down to edit with Divi, it'll open up our page and we can view it as if it were on a phone or on a tablet for that matter. All right, now, so from the site right here, if we go down to the little purple, so if we hit the little purple three dots there, we go to tablet mode or we can go to phone mode, but starting off with tablet mode uh, on the top, honestly, that doesn't look too bad. I, you see the menu will show up on, I believe the right side when you click on it or in the middle, I guess. Um, this doesn't look too bad. I'm not really going to change that. I like the big font. I like this. This looks pretty good as well. Uh, the testimonials, I assume, are going to look pretty bad. Yeah, the testimonials look pretty weird. Other than that, uh, everything looks okay on a tablet, and so we'll, we'll get to changing that in a second. But now going into mobile, this is where things sometimes get a little weirder. So uh, we did already change the font for this one earlier on in the video. I'm not sure if you guys caught that or not, but I'll just a quick recap on how to change like font size, for example. If we go into editing the font and we go over to design, you can change really anything you want on there. So heading, uh, if we want the font size to be different, on mobile, we can easily do that. But you could also change like the heading font type on mobile if you wanted. Uh, you could change like the alignment on mobile if you wanted. There's tons of different things you could change. Pretty much anything you wanted, you can have a completely different mobile site. So if we look at the heading text size, we click on the little phone icon. It shows us right here that we could have them different. So if we click on that, you can look at the phone font. Uh, it's 31 pixels. Tablet font is 60 pixels and desktop, we're back at 60 as well. So that's how you can really change the font size on each of these just by clicking that little icon there. And likewise, anything else you want, you can change. Uh, so maybe not shadow, for example, but if you want a different font, like I said, you can just click on that and change the different font for a different device. So now if you wanted to hide something altogether, how would you actually go about doing that? So let's find the section that we don't want. And I think it's this testimonial section, this entire uh, I believe it's a row right here. So if we just go to editing that, so we'll click on the little gear icon, we go to advanced, go to visibility, and you can say disable on phone. So suddenly will not be on our mobile website. Uh, and likewise, we could disable it on tablet. So that way the testimonials are only showing up when we're looking at it on a desktop site. So you see, it's just going to gray it out for now. But if we go to desktop site, uh, testimonials should still be there. Um, so yep, they're still there. If we go to tablet, they should be kind of faded out. Um, so yeah, faded out, meaning that entire section is going to be gone. Um, so this is still going to be here. That's good that they're showing us that because we, we don't want that. Uh, so let's go and hide this now. Um, or actually, realistically, we probably should just hide this entire section. So instead of what we did, we can go up here, change the settings for this entire section, go to advanced, visibility, hide on tablet and phone. And that way, you see the entire thing is grayed out. So when someone's on a tablet, it would go down to here and then immediately skip. That would not exist. It would not be grayed out. It would just not exist. And they would end up down here with the rest of our stuff. And likewise, when we go to a mobile view, uh, it should be grayed out there as well. So yeah, it, it's like faded. So it's not actually going to show up when someone's on your mobile website. It's just showing you as the editor right now so you know what it's going to look like. And that's something that's really important when you're editing your website to make sure that everything looks as good as possible on every different device because you never know who's going to be on your website on a tablet and you're losing customers because, uh, you know, it just is not optimized and it looks really bad. 
All right, so now we have our homepage pretty much ready to go. We've got the menus on there, the, we've got the header, we've got the buttons that all work. Uh, it's optimized for different devices. But now let's say we really wanna add some more stuff to our website besides just the pages. Obviously, blog posts are a really big part of having a website, especially if you're trying to rank higher in Google, you want to gain traffic, you want to have a lot of, you know, relevant up to date posts. So if you go to post, it's actually really a great benefit of using WordPress in general, is that you can have such a large library of posts and really manage them so easily. So if we go to add new, you can just go to post add new or go up to new, and then say post right there if you wanted. Um, so we're just gonna say add new right here. And you can either make the post, as you can see here, in the editor with Divi, um, or we can use the WordPress editor. Now, the WordPress editor, for the most part, kind of sucks. Uh, that's why we got Divi. So on the right side, you'll see that we can change stuff like categories and tags and, and excerpt and uh, you know things like that, the featured image for this in the WordPress editor. And then we'll use the Divi builder to actually make uh, the article itself. So right here, we can say, maybe this is going to be, i uh, just say first blog post and we'll go and use the Divi Builder. Now, the good thing is the Divi Builder for an article is extremely easy to do, and uh, it, it's really not that different from choosing a page. And so I'll show you guys just really quick, if we're starting from scratch, uh, it looks so similar. So it shows you the title on the top, and then that, and then comments on the bottom. Otherwise, it's almost exactly the same. You can see that we can add anything we want. It's gonna be really, really similar to the editor we had before. Uh, except it's really a little bit less, it's a little bit smaller, a little bit less like the sections are not full width all the time. Uh, we have comments on the right side. That's just the layout that we're using right now. Uh, but for the most part, you know, making blog posts, you're really, I think most people are just using maybe an accordion every now and then. Uh, but for the most part, just text and images and maybe the occasional button as well. So when you're making that, I'm not going to get into this too much more. I want to show you guys uh, how to make other pages using those other two options I showed you right there. Um, being either like the, the template, for example, uh, or the other one. So let's just really quickly, uh, we're going to save this one. We're going to go back to WordPress editor. So save and exit. Saving it, exiting. It's not published yet because we didn't choose to publish that. But if we go back to pages, now we made these other pages here. We made an about us page, contact, jobs, stuff like that. So let's go and edit one of these with Divi, maybe about us, for example. And from this, it'll say, how do you want to edit it again? And so we have the option to edit with Divi, like I just selected. It's going gonna, it's gonna to choose, we can say, clone an existing page. We can choose a pre-made layout. We can build from scratch. Let's go and check the pre-made layouts. Now, this is something that Divi does really well. So rather than spending a lot of time, I know you watched this video and I just showed you how to make an entire page from scratch. That was important to better understand how to modify these pages. Now, if you are just looking to, uh, you know, you could you could look up any page you want. So let's see, they have 170. Let's just see if we have about us. Let's see if they have an about us one. Okay, here we go. They've got quite a few about us ones. Uh, and so you want to find the one that kind of fits your theme, fits your style a little bit. Um, so let's just say, uh, not too crazy, maybe a simple one. Let's just choose this one. And so we can very easily just use this layout and, you know, in layouts in this pack, we have quite a few different ones as well. So if you want to have, hey, you know what, you want to have a portfolio page as well, you can use this same pack right here uh, and be consistent across different pages. Um, so this one right here is a pre-made layout. Let's go and uh, use this layout. All right, now it's going to ask for our username and authentication key. So if we go back to Elegant Themes, Elegant Themes, and we can go to our account. Uh, so we need to sign into our account. So if you go to, so from Elegant Themes, if you go to account and then you go to my account, you can go to API keys. Uh, and then I'm going to blur this out. But you can see right there, you'll have your API key so you can copy that. Uh, and then we can go back and paste that right here. And then click submit. All right, so here we go. We have our About Us page. Um, and obviously, I would recommend changing the color scheme on stuff like this. But you get an idea. The good, a good practice here would be to go down and try to figure out how they made each section. And it can really help you to better understand uh, how to do things in the future. So you can see right here that this is a section um, right here. So it's purple. So that makes sense. It's like a header section is what they added. Then this is all one section. The gray area is all one section. This is another one. This is honestly looking kind of like the one that we made. I would say the one we made probably looks even better, honestly. But see, they, they use these bars here for um, like what their focus is. So they're focusing 80% on brand strategy, 60% on internet marketing. Like you could use it for that. And like I said, guys, I always 
kind of not a huge fan of these little slider bar things. I, I've never found them to be especially useful, but you know, if you just want to have pages, um, this is a great way to do that. And so if you go to contact, we can make that page as well. Um, so if we just navigate around right now, we are in, we can go and save this one and we want to go back to our WordPress dashboard. So we can actually go to our website now. And if I refresh it, uh, we should be able to right here. So I did add start here on the top. Uh, so if we're on a different page, so about us, for example, of course, the color scheme changes entirely. You feel like you're on a different website, very foreign. That's really not what we want to do, but we can go and edit everything that we need to BC start here. We can navigate around. It starts to feel more like an actual website. Although, like I said, this one looks significantly different. So let's go to about us and let's start changing that just a little bit. I'm not going to get too into that for this video uh, because I think you guys are really starting to get the hang of this by now. So if we go up to enable visual builder on the top, uh, we can easily for, you know, because we're signed in here, not anyone could do that obviously, but because we're signed in and we're on our website, we can just go and edit it right away. And it says, howdy, Santrell tutorials. Um, and from here you can go down and you can see that like, if we want to change this and we don't like that it's blue, you can very easily, uh, you know, honestly, why don't we copy what we had on the homepage? Maybe the about us page should be a little bit more like that one. So something that we could do uh, just to show you guys a little bit more of that. I know I touched on it, you know, a little bit earlier, but let's go back to our homepage here and we're going to save the top to our library. So let's go to pages and we'll save a couple parts of this to our library to use and make it, you know, kind of tie it together a little bit better. Um, kind of just use these as themes for different sections. So starting with, with this, this top section, let's just, you know, we can just click on a little drop down here and we can save it to library and we can call this one top one. Uh, and this could be you know, save it. You can put it in categories as well. And then something else we might want to use. Um, let's just say maybe like this section, not this, not this footer, this section right here. Maybe, maybe we really like, or honestly, I kind of do like this section. We spend some time on this one, right? We spend a lot of time on this one guys. So we'll save this one to library and we'll just call this mid one. You can name them whenever you want, honestly. And so I'm just going to save it, not making these global items because these are going to be different on this other page. Uh, so now let's go back. And we can go to our about us page. So we'll go to pages, all pages, and we will edit the about us with Divi. And in there, we will say that on the top, I really want to add, I want to re, you know, re-add that one from the library. So we are going to add one right below it. So add right there. And we are going to add from library. And you'll see there are a couple different ones. The green one means it's a global one. So be very careful when you're changing those. And we'll say top one right here. And that gives us the giant top thing right there. Uh, and then the one that we had, the about us, you know, we really don't need that anymore. So now we can say about us. So we can click on this text here. Uh, we can highlight it and say about us. And then we can make this, honestly, it probably should be a little bit shorter. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch on that right now. You guys get the idea of how you can change that. And then on the bottom, we can add our own footer. So if we click on the little plus icon, add from library, add our main footer. So that's what's gonna be showing up on the bottom. We'll get rid of this in a minute down here, uh, but that should really be what our footer is aiming for. And so this page here, I think looks already a lot better than it did. And maybe on each page, it's a theme to have like a different background on the top. Uh, so you could easily just go into settings and go to background and just change this image. Just click on it, change it to whatever we want. If we want about us to be a page uh, where we have, I think this is the one we're using right now. Maybe a cityscape would look good. Let's see what that would look like about us. Yeah, honestly, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, maybe we want to shift it up a little bit. And I showed you guys before that you can change the position of these. If we want it top center, uh, actually, it, it kind of, it aligns to the top. You think you'd cut off the top. It's kind of weird. Um, but we're going to go bottom center is what we want. Bottom center. There we go. So you can read the text a little bit better. Maybe you want to add a glow to it or something. Or maybe you want to add uh, like a parallax effect, like I said. So if you scroll, it moves. Looks cool. But I think for this one, um, really what we want is we just want to add uh, a gradient on this one. So we want a gradient where it goes from, uh, what, let's say, maybe white. So we want to go from, that's all black. So we want that to go from any color, mostly white. So if we go from white, so white there, kind of opaque, to this one, and we want to layer this on top. So on top of the image. Mm, okay, so that's still kind of hard to see, but we, you know, obviously you can adjust the direction of this gradient. Um, so maybe like in the middle, in the start position, could be not there. We want this to the end position to move up. 
There we go. So maybe you want something like that, just a little bit more faded so you can still read it, but you still see the image in the background. I think that looks kind of cool. And you get to go through and edit your entire page. And again, this looks really similar to the one that we already made. Uh, but that just gives you guys an idea of how you can edit uh, some different things uh, within here. Now, what I said before, let's go down and say we want to add one more section in here. Uh, how about right down here, right between these two? See if we can get it. There it is. And we can add, uh, you know, these other sections here. So I showed you regular, I showed you from the library. Now specialty ones are really pretty powerful. I think this gives you kind of some fun extra things you can do. So if you just want to have like a bar on the left and, you know, this really complicated looking thing, uh, let's just do this one right here. So we can add that and it'll tell you like, you know, you get to add the first row is this one. Uh, and then maybe we want to add just some different things within that row. And it gives you an idea. So if we check this out, I think in wire view, it'll give us a better idea of what we're looking at. So if we go to the wire view, this is, I believe the third section. So here it is, this section right here. So you have something on the left and we have rows here uh, and we can choose, we can stack up the rows however we want, have another one there. Uh, and then below that, maybe we want like a triple, right? So you have tons and tons of options for this one. And then on the left side, we can add just one big module over there. So if we want to add uh, maybe some comments or we could add a little sidebar, lots of different options for how this is going to be set up. And like, sure, you kind of could have this set up uh, in a different way, but I think this is really kind of unique. And I, I really do like setting it up with the specialty ones. And then the last one that I didn't show you just yet was actually if you go so hard to find this sometimes. There we go. Uh, if we go to full width, you have some other things. Generally, I don't use full width. It's a little bit, it's a little tricky for things. And it's, it's specifically useful uh, for like these modules right here. So if you're looking for a full width slider um, or a full width menu, uh, or if you're looking for, you know, a map, a full width map is actually kind of useful sometimes, then you can add that. And that's like a good thing to put on your footer as well. Uh, but otherwise, I don't tend to use full width things all that much, except as like, uh, you know, on the top or bottom of my page occasionally, uh, because, you know, like map, if you're scrolling, sometimes uh, it gets caught here and you're like zooming out when you think you're scrolling down the screen, uh, things like that. Otherwise, it is, you know, it's fun. It's useful. Comment down below if you guys are interested in using this, uh, you know, just to give you guys an idea. So we'll just touch on this really quickly. Some of the other things we could put in here. Uh, so if we hit, if we hit plus, see if we can find it. Come on, Divi. There we go. Full width. Then, of course, you could add some from the library. Like I said, we don't have any right now. But a full width header, a full width image. Uh, images, I, I like to just make it a background on a regular on a regular section. Uh, full width code. Again, that would only be useful if you had like a third party thing or if you wrote your own code, which I assume if you did that, you probably are not watching this video. Uh, and then we have full width menu. We've got the post slider. Um, and so if we want to see like a full width slider, for example, that's something that could be useful if you want to slide between uh, like these things. So somebody can click next and it'll bring them to like another thing. Uh, you can have some different on the left side, you can have a title, a little blurb, and then like a click for an about us thing. So this could be like fall sales if you're selling clothing. So like the top of a homepage of a website, uh, you used to see a lot of this and now you'll probably only see it on like, like Kohl's or something like some websites might, or maybe L.L. Bean would still do this. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but a lot of websites have moved on and just do like the solid single image header like this on their homepage. Just cleaner, easier to look at, and, and more aesthetically appealing. All right, so before we wrap it up, if we go back to the Divi checklist, like I said, I'm going to actually add a few more things to this now that I made the video. I wanted to make sure that these align, so I just kind of gave it like a rough outline now, and by the time you click on this when the video is uploaded, it should be much more fleshed out than you're seeing. But if we go down to the bottom, kind of the next steps to do, once you start building your page, um, you could go, well, first of all, the pictures like this one, you can get them from Pixabay. Uh, so you can get lots of free images out there that are, you know, no copyright. You can use them on your website. You can sell stuff. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then if you go down here, some of the things I was going to say the next step. So one of them is to do some keyword research before you just make some blog articles. Uh, so if you just go up and you want to start making some posts, I recommend not just making posts about absolutely random stuff because the truth is a lot of them are never going to be seen by anybody if it's not really targeting exactly the right crowd. So what I recommend is actually SEMrush. SEMrush is a tool that we use. It's very powerful. Um, and it's it's really one of the most popular ones on the internet when it comes to uh, actually, you know, doing your keyword research and optimizing your website. And it is, you know, I will have a full tutorial on this in the future, guys. So I'll, I'll link that down below as well. Um, and actually, I probably will have it linked up here as soon as I have that up. Uh, but, you know, SEMrush is something that I recommend that you can go in there and start to just kind of optimize your website, start 
figuring out what keywords have low search or high search volume and low competition. So it gives you a better chance of ranking when you're really just starting off. And then the very last thing is if you guys are interested, uh, we do have an email, uh, an email campaign, so an email newsletter. We send it out just once a week, uh, just like a five bullet thing of, uh, you know, usually Monday, it's every Monday morning, actually, we'll send out uh, just like five tips about marketing. Some of them are uh, tools you can use, free things, some ideas, uh, some just like thought provoking things, diff- different things that we're sending out every week. But we're not like, you know, we're not selling online courses here, obviously, guys, uh, we really believe in free information. So if you're interested in staying up to date on marketing, just go on, on over here to the Divi checklist and sign up on the bottom. All right, guys, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about starting your website using Divi. So comment down below if you enjoy this video. If you have any questions, definitely I'll try to answer as many as I possibly can. Good luck with your website. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. This tutorial was created by Santro Media, and this video was not sponsored by any brands. At Santro Media, we aim to help you make the most of digital marketing with free information. To make this possible, many of our featured programs are from our partners. This does not influence our evaluations. For more information, please visit our website.